Hello everyone. I am Rushil Rungta and I am a curious 12 year old boy who always wants to learn from young leaders experiences. Lately, I have been really concerned about environmental issues like global warming and climate change. I have done my part in saving the environment by participating in beach cleanups and even planting trees. But often I wonder is there any other way I can protect the environment and to tell us more about this topic my guest today is miss lin lee the founder of bearpack a company that is trying to put an end to the use of disposables to save our planet bearpack has partnered with more than 100 plus restaurants in singapore and paris with delivery platforms giants such as grab food deliveroo and food panda in order to bring a unique reusable packaging experience to over 3000 bear pack members welcome Hi. lin how are you today i'm very good today thank you so much for asking thank you very much for joining on my show so let yes. me begin with my burning questions yes When and what was it that first made you conscious about the problem of food packaging and other packaging waste being such a challenge for our environment? Um, sure. Um, <clears throat> so my name is Ling. I'm come from Vietnam, um, and um, after my my studies in Europe, I came back to Vietnam and worked in different sectors. um and and so got caught up into you know a very busy and hectic lifestyle so what i do is that i order meal plans right they come in every day two or three meals and uh, i find it very convenient but at the end of the day um i find so much waste um mm. in my house and i was thinking like hmm, how can like why is why is here and what happened after this uh after i throw them away And then what hit me the most is, I think in 2018 or 17, there's a statistic saying that Vietnam is the top five country polluting the ocean the most, yes, yes. and that really saddened me. It really saddened me, and I, I really feel like I, I need to do something. So that's one incident. The second incident is, um, at that the same time I was looking for a golf course uh, construction company. Yes. yes. So I. So when when I go for side check and one side check that uh, at a very beautiful landscape, and uh, they they started to you know clear off the site and cut off the trees to have the site uh, ready, and I think that's the moment I told to my boss like I cannot do it anymore. I cannot see the cutting tree to have a uh, beautiful uh, golf courses. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can't see. I cannot see. You know, we 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 take over nature, the nature to 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 serve a very small amount of people to play golf. Mm-hmm. So uh, after that, my boss was like, "Okay, Ling, if you don't do it, then somebody else will do it." I say, "Yes, yeah, fine. At least I'm not part of this broken system. Uh, I'm out." I think after that, uh, I was out, and uh, the first thing I do is to replace. that single use packaging in plastic with um through a cane fiber packaging the mm-hmm. same single use and um what i see is that um whatever you do yeah it's, it's great to change the material from plastic to sugar cane fiber because you know we know that sugar cane fiber can be compostable within 45 days it's, mm-hmm. it's great for the environment i love it but Then, if I look at the whole supply chain of that single-use packaging, you still need to produce it somehow. You still need to transport it all the way from Thailand and Malaysia, from China yes, to yes. Vietnam, and then you use it for only 12 minutes, mm-hmm. and then you throw them away. So yes, it's great. It serves our convenience, but still, it disperses a lot of uh, CO2 emissions and transportations and the whole supply chain just to serve our convenience. So I, so I think that must be a better way to to work on that uh, this issue. That's really wonderful to know, and 
the yes. first time i became conscious about packaging waste was yes. when i volunteered for a beach cleanup actually and i noticed so much styrofoam so much mm. plastic and then i realized you know i have to do something and that was really <laughs> an eye opener for me right great it's really interesting to hear how you went from studying to europe and then how it just became you started bear pack it's really interesting mm. yeah so moving on you mm. have impressive sales and marketing background what is it easy for you to switch to a field which is so different from what you studied um i studied business international business and then i've been through many companies uh, many fields <clears throat> but mostly in sales and marketing um but i think at the very beginning of my career i i know that i want to start a business i don't know which one but i know that i need to sell in any kind of company you need to sell you need to do marketing that's the most too important uh, skill set and experience uh, i believe i need to to hard i don't know how to produce a product uh, i don't like to do it and coding because i'm not good at logic so i think that's a two thing that i need to hone and um and when i established uh, repack um i think this is development in our company is very important and so marketing uh, how to talk to human how to uh, get the attention is very important so um at the end is not that different uh it's just different problem uh set the problem you need to solve but the skill set is almost the same mm So basically, you used what you had learned from marketing yeah. and sales for Bearpack. Yeah. Well, then you also need to think about leadership. You need to think about team management, and uh, think about business models. So it's, it's more uh, complex uh, when you are your own. If you are like entrepreneur, you need to think about how to make more money, how to motivate yourself. So there's many, many more than than just sales and marketing. That's really interesting to hear, and I also um, almost I'm just like you because I also don't like IT and coding because <laughs> one word, one one coding message goes wrong, then it doesn't work. Mm. So I just don't, mm. I don't, I'm not really interested mm. in that sector. Okay. On, on to the third question. Sure. How important is a team for you, and especially at the startup stage? Hmm. Um, you know, it's it's like a village to build a business. So if I do it on my own, I can do that much, and I have only 24 hours per day. I need to sleep eight hours, so you have only what 16, right? 16 hours. You can't work 16 hours per day. Right? You are not Elon Musk or not you know, Steve Jobs. You are a normal human being. So to there's so many aspects of it. Say besides sales marketing that I, I'm very confident with. We have other aspects of products, uh, finance, uh, accounting. Uh, those need you can do it. You need to outsource it to someone. So that needs a team. So it's crucially important um, to to have to make to to have a team believe in your vision, believe in the causes, of the mission of the company that you are building. Mm. About it, uh, also a great cultural uh, that that you have uh, that you build with the company. So I think. Without team, uh, maybe you can just be a freelancer. <laughs> mm, okay. mm. I completely agree with you because I also feel that you can only do so much alone. But then when when you're mm. together as a team, it's that six mm. hours multiplied by that number of people, so you can achieve much mm. more. And mm. I've experienced this when I work on projects in school. Like I always mm-hmm. cherish my team members because. I'm able. We are able to divide the task equally, and then mm-hmm. finish the project in time. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So moving forward, yeah, is a known fact in Singapore that people struggle to return trays, and therefore I can imagine it being a task for you to get customers to return your containers. So mm. people like you who come up with new ideas often need to mm. do a lot of. I mean, often need to do a lot to bring a change in behavior. So, mm. what has been your experience, and how have you dealt with this problem? Yeah, you are very right. Um, the return tray, I, 
uh, it's, it's, it's very uh, different for me because when I was in Europe, uh, I was at McDonald's. So when I clean, it's, it's, it's very normal to, it's like a mask. If you don't return the tray, people look at you in a strange eye. You were like, oh, what's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I came here, I am very surprised that uh, I don't have to return the tray because I always think that Singapore and Europe, you know, have a similar sim similar level of uh, a, a certain expectation, right? Mm. So I was like, huh, I don't have, like, people just said, oh, leave it there, leave it there. Like, really, the the the, the, the cleaner at the hawker center can say, just leave it there, leave it there. And they won't come and clean up. Oh. So it's, yeah, it's so it's not because Singapore is like lazy to return. It's actually the hawker center tell them to, to don't do it. Like leave it there for them. Like, they know what to do. Like, okay, sure, I leave it for you. Um. So, so, so I think the uh, the comparisons or the analogy is a little bit different. Now. Uh, when it comes to single-use packaging and return, um, we, we are very lucky to have a, a group of uh, eco-conscious uh, members who are willing to do extra minds for the common missions, which is reduce single-use packaging, reduce uh, plastic waste, uh, disposable waste. And what we are working on is not only the return, um, issue is we are working uh, toward the over packaging culture, right? Mm. If you need a cup for your to go coffee, happy, it's okay. Uh, I mean, it's not okay. It's, it's you need a cup for your takeaway, right? Disposable cup for takeaway. Mm. But then if you need like extra lid, the straw, and then the carrier, and then another mm. bag, then that's the a uh, little bit obsessive. Um, uh, then it's very unnecessary. So. Daypack is, is is born with the fluctuation of the over packaging uh, that that happening uh, in in Singapore and also in Asia well, from Vietnam we see that uh, we believe that uh, or our culture is that you know everything needs to wrap nicely has to new has to be sparkling has to be spotless uh, is is show your hospitality to your clients right. Mm -hmm. um, but then it generates so much unnecessary waste because uh, you don't need you know four or five plastic packaging just for one coffee yeah. so that is what we are working on so, and our member knows that they, they understand that and believe in that and therefore um, they make the extra uh, effort to return mm. very insightful and i'm sure yeah. returning contain uh, containers as well as trays will soon become a habit it's just a matter of time yeah. So on to my next question. Having interviewed a few successful business founders, I have learned yeah. that leaders have a big vision and are prepared to face obstacles that come along the way. I'm yeah. therefore very curious to hear from you. How would you react if all the food packaging becomes eco-friendly and sustainable? Would that threaten your business in any way? Um, I, I believe that the I don't say the pie, but then the the, the problem are very huge. Uh, it's really big right now. So um, it, it is, you know, it's become very uh, practical and, and viral. I think. That would be amazing. Uh, mm. If it's better than reusable, that would be great. Um, we don't see it as a threat. We see that, okay, uh, things change, things move. That's life. There's, there's better um, solution than us. It's time to go. It's same with Kodak, right? They 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 are the first one. Kodak, the movie. You don't know yeah, the yeah. yeah. So they're the first one who created the uh, digital camera. Yes, yes. And they are the the, the digital camera killed their own business too, right? So mm. yeah, uh, it's evolution. is it's, uh, it's part of life. Uh, I, I welcome that experience. It's good. It's a big win for the environment. Mm. I like to see that you take everything so positively and it's a learning for me because um, yeah. it, it teaches me that I should focus on what I intend to do rather than get influenced or focus more about what happens around me or what ha happens like people yeah. have my ideas and yeah. So mm. next, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, 
you were saying something so you were thinking yeah so you was like oh it's just a discussion so you were thinking like oh is somebody if you share your idea to someone and they steal your idea from you you will worry about it i i mean like that has happened to me in fact in mm-hmm. discussions where people just build on my ideas but i don't really bother like i just ignore and i i mean inside i feel like why isn't he giving me credit but on the outside i feel like it's okay maybe he had the same intention so i just ignore that he just used my idea so that's what i that's how i react mm-hmm. and so the next question is that mm-hmm. covid has been a lesson in adaptability for everyone yes and some cases <laughs> had to quickly adapt to skyrocketing increase in demand whereas others had to dig deep to tide mm. the adversity so how mm. did you cope with covid and what have been your learnings wow uh this is a very uh, yeah, insightful question too so um when we started in um early 2019 uh, so it's been almost more than 2 years and then we were very excited and we you know we focused on corporations so right so it, so we built our product we built so many tests that we know that we want to to work with corporations like PPG PPC uh where we can sell our package to them and that is how we want to position ourselves then the covid hit and we was like oh oh this is bad <laughs> hmm. um everybody's staying home uh, what should we do what can we do so like like you say like we we had to really rethink regroup rethink and say okay uh now everybody go to use uh, delivery delivery yes uh w- let's talk to them and offer the options that better can be available on the delivery platform and instead of go after corporates we go after end user and uh, everyone uh, and it's turned out actually quite uh, exciting because it's shortened our roadmap right we was all like, oh, let's do corporate and then one day we will do delivery but now because of the covid we had to shut that and we said okay let's go after delivery and when corporate come back we go after corporate again and it's has been great man like uh we are available on grab food delivery food panda the majority of our uh, volumes that it's called the transaction the volume uh, come from uh, those three platforms uh people are excited our members say that they they quit um uh, delivery or, or take away all together but since they found their pack they are very happy to you know receive food and meals with our extra trust in their house so i find Yeah, so it has has been a, a great journey, uh, the roller coasters. Uh especially now like, you know, every, every month or two we go back to <laughs> the place <laughs> too. And just before that we we and we engage with corporates say, "Hey, we are here." And then COVID hit again, so we stay back home. So it's it's mm. it's, it's fluctuating, but I think is everyone, I think everyone in, in this planet now Uh, we've seen the uncertainty and then uh, we had to just adapt accept, accept it and adapt yeah. mm. that's really interesting to know and i'm now just thinking about it actually during covid people would have ordered food a lot so your sales would have gone up quite a bit and yeah. i don't think anyone was ready for covid but what it has made us ready for is adaptability and it has mm-hmm. become one of the key focuses for all businesses as well as individuals. Hmm. Right. So the next question I really want to um see how you answer this question because mm. um, I've experienced this quite a few times. So do mm. you consider partnership important and you recently announced a partnership with Just Tapao. So mm-hmm. how are you working together with them to solve the surplus food waste in Singapore? Uh I didn't understand the first part of the question. So Oh, okay. So, um important it is. You had announced a partnership with Just Tap Out. Yeah. So, do you consider partnerships with other companies important? And yeah. how have you been working with Just Tap Out? 
to solve the uh-huh. surplus food waste in Singapore? Uh, Chester Bao is a is an amazing uh, uh, startup and amazing this is idea, right? I mean, surplus food and then you can buy them in much lower price. You save a lot for any other for us. You save a lot of money and actually they give you bigger portions than <laughs> than normal portions. So I find it super interesting and uh, just that about uh, approaches us and say, hey, their member want to save food, but then they don't want to get, you know, uh, extra yeah. packaging. So we actually very complement each other in, in that way. So we're very happy to, we, we find it such a <coughs> amazing uh, partners to, to work with just that. It's really uh, nice to do that. Mm. Mm. I think in these trying times, it's good to see that two companies are coming together to reduce packaging and food waste. It's really happening to see that because I think these two are the main biggest problems in Singapore. I mean, last year, 2019, amount of food waste was just crazy. So by decreasing both at the same time, um, it's really nice to see that. And mm. finally, what would be your message to children of my age about <laughs> starting a company that they believe in and about zero waste? Oh, um, I, uh, uh, this is a, again a very good question. I've been thinking about that for so long. Um, so before this call, I, I had a, a really interesting uh, time to listen to a few podcasts. And what they say is that you see opp- when when things are inefficient, you see opportunity, right? Mm. So I think as entrepreneur or as of any ages, doesn't need to be your age or my age, of any ages, if you see something that is not right, you see something that's not efficient, it doesn't make sense. Just maybe step back and say, hmm, how can I make it better? Mm. What can what could be the another way to improve it, right? And then suddenly you see opportunity and it may, many many in, in everywhere. Um, some people tell me that like uh, tell me like mm, you, you know there's so many startups now solving so many different uh, problems and issues. I don't think I, there will be more there will be opportunity for me to do uh, to, to create a company to solve problems. And I think it's not uh, true because when things evolve, they will yeah, problem is so evil. Uh, when you can see problem, uh, and then problem is opportunity, and uh, you can find it everywhere. So uh, when when it's not not only about zero waste, but I think just look at the nature and and see what we can do to what we can do in daily life. Um, to protect the Mother Earth from nature. Uh, zero waste is one way to think, but this can be, you know, CO2 emissions is a lot uh, of the problems. Greenhouses, emissions, there's so many problems need to be solved around uh, the Mother Earth. So just open your eyes and look around, and you can see them and you can find a way to, to, to solve it. That was a really great message for the younger generation, Miss Lynn. And we have, mm. want, we have a lot to learn from leaders like yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Miss Lynn, for giving me all the advice first about uh, looking for opportunities and sharing with me your experience. I think sure. looking at your message about looking for opportunities, I think in the future, I will definitely remember this quote that when you see something inefficient, you see opportunities and I would definitely yeah. do something um, to save our world. Thank you, really. Thank you so much. Uh, really lovely to talk to you. I think it's the most fun interview I have so far. It's <laughs> amazing to, to, to have your energy and uh, to see young, exciting, um, very um, thoughtful. Uh, and the, the, I think the, the podcast, in your interview, uh, would just, you know, like to flow up in the very soon future. So keep a great work. I'm really happy to, to talk to you and uh, really hope that we can have a chance to see each other in real life. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, yeah. Lynn. And with yeah. that, we have come to the end of the podcast. Please remember to subscribe and 
give me so I will. <laughs> to the feed uh, after the podcast thank it's you really very good much. thanks so much for sharing have a great uh, lovely saturday thank you you too right. bye